we've always been a cricket centric nation cricket is still about 90% of our sports market but increasingly there is a lot of funding from the private sector coming into all the other sports as well how do you see this as a business opportunity no i think i think other than cricket uh, and kabaddi these yes. i think these two sports are commercially have proven themselves time and time again uh, there's still a long way to go for other sports to become a business opportunity yeah uh, you are seeing the advent of non cricketing brand endorsements happening yes. so you're seeing the likes of neeraj chopra pv sindhu uh, you're seeing the likes of even some of our wrestlers getting big brand endorsement deals mm. Uh, some of our, even Murli Shri Shankar got a uh, long jumper got a deal with Toyota, so you're seeing that happening. Uh, you're seeing uh, like I was amazed that when we were watching the India Pakistan match or when I was watching the final uh, of the T20 World Cup, you had Neeraj Chopra coming in during yes. the advertising breaks. You know, few years ago that was unheard of. You could not even have imagined a track and field athlete uh, coming in during a cricket match. So it shows that brands are looking at non-cricketing heroes. Uh, the country has recognized non-cricketing heroes as well. Um, so for them, there is a future. There is a career. Sport in Olympic disciplines, you have a future. Earlier, if you were a boxer or you were a track and field athlete or you were a swimmer or you were a, any, any sport athlete, uh, you know, the question mark was, do, can I make enough money to pursue this as a career? Right. Now, it's very clear that if you are of an international quality, if you can win medals at the Commonwealth Games or the Asian Games or the Olympic Games, there will be brands who will lap you up. And we've seen that uh, with the, with Neeraj and with the others. It's still a very long tail thing, right? You have, have to actually be an Olympics gold winner to get a shot at at least getting endorsements. Neeraj is uh, the fifth highest paid uh, sports star in the country. Okay. Uh, the top, top four, four being, being cricketers, cricketers yes. yeah. and he's five and then there are cricketers below him. Exactly. Uh, but he's there and PV Sindhu is also right up there. Mm -hmm. PV Sindhu actually commands more than the women cricketers. So it's, it's changing, uh, but, but yeah, it's, it's, you need to be at that level to, to command that money. But people are changing, you know, not only just brands, you have people calling these Olympians for lectures, you have them calling for corporate sessions to motivate people. Uh, you know, so I, I, I was at an event where Deepa was speaking on the Produnova and how she did it and she was one of the only five living people who's ever done a Produnova. So stuff like that, you know, so there is a lot more interest coming in. Uh, in do you in, think the you know, internet made that happen? Everyone knows what these guys do. Do you think that would be a big factor yeah, between 2020 and now? Yeah, I think it's a huge factor. I think, uh, you know, now we know how Neeraj trains, yes. we know how... PV Sindhu trains or Lakshya Sen is training. We know what Avinash Sable and Parola are doing in Colorado. We see their flexibility videos. We see them flipping. We see them doing so many amazing things. And, you know, I think the appreciation of what it takes to be an elite athlete in these sports uh, was not well understood earlier. But now with Twitter, with Instagram, with Facebook, with YouTube, I mean, it's all over the place. Like, I, I remember... The day Neera Chopra won gold hmm. for India in Tokyo, the next day on Google from India, the most Googled thing was how to throw the javelin. Yes, I remember right? that so, as well. Which is amazing. So, and, and, and brands are lapping up as well. When we had, you know, Meera Bhai Channu uh, win the silver yeah. medal, all she did to the media was give a bite saying that I feel like uh, getting a pizza. And you had a lot of the pizza brands. Yeah. I track the consumer space, so I know that, you know, yeah, Domino's yeah. lapped up on that opportunity, Correct. gave her pizzas uh, for free, free yeah. for life. Um, from a business branding standpoint, you, you see the potential of these heroes. Um, what do they teach you about business? I think, see, sports at the end of the day is the ultimate leveler. I agree. Right? You. When you're winning, 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 suddenly you become arrogant, you become, you, you, you know, you let your guard down, suddenly anybody can f come from anywhere and beat you. Uh, and then you go down. So it's like a roller coaster. Uh, and I think uh, it's like business. If you don't continuously train, you don't continuously work hard, you don't continuously, you know, excel every single day, somebody will come and beat you from behind. So, you know, for me, sports teaches one about business in, in many ways. It teaches about life in many ways. It teaches you about how you can go through the ups and downs of life and what you need to do in order to remain balanced. And also... For me, at least, when we deal with the team sports, uh, you have to constantly think of transition because a player is at his peak in different sports at different ages and then you have to plan for the future. Otherwise, the team will decline. 
Uh, same in business. You have people retiring all the time. You have people who need to upskill themselves all the time. And if you don't get the right level of leadership in different levels, like if you don't have the next level of leaders ready and then the following leaders ready, then when the people at the top go, the business will take time to transition. And planning for that transition has to happen a lot in advance. So I'll give you an example, like in, in Bengaluru FC, mm -hmm. which is one of our teams, Sunil Chetri is about to retire. Yes. If we start now and start thinking, oh, who's the next Sunil Chetri for Bengaluru FC? It's not going to be ready next year. We had, we had to start three years ago. And that's some of the things that we've learned in business as well, that look at sport, learn from sport, and adapt those principles in business and vice versa. And if I may add one more thing to it, you know, sports is the ultimate meritocracy. When a javelin leaves Neera Chopra's hands, it does not see the caste, creed, religion, uh, ethnicity, or even the economic background of the thrower. It falls where it has to. It's, it's ultimate meritocracy. In the next four years, uh, what do you think will be the investment that will come in from the GSW Group in the sports uh, you know, support system? Over the next four years, we anticipate as a group to spend close to 500 crores on sports, okay. uh, on development of sports. This is excluding our franchises and everything, just on the Olympic program. We have six Olympic centers now in India, and we plan on adding a couple more centers. We're in talks with several state governments who want us to come and do the gap funding and bring in the expertise uh, on their existing infrastructure. Uh, so we today train about 6,000 athletes across these sports. Apart from this, we are also the high performance partners of the Boxing Federation of India, mm -hmm. the Judo Federation of India, the National Rifle Association of India and the Wrestling Federation of India. Corporate spending in sport has increased by how much according to you as per you know the information that you have around the people that you speak to? Because we've seen investments coming in from a lot of these large conglomerates as well. Yeah, I think... I think uh, you know, corporates are spending increasingly on Olympic sports. Like to give you an example, the at the Inspire Institute of Sports, we have over 25 different donors. So apart from JSW, we have the likes of the multinationals and the Indian com large companies who are investing and supporting. When they're investing, today. they're also looking at ROI at some point in time, right? What's the business case here? No, it's not about ROI for them. This is mostly coming from their CSR, CSR. budgets. And uh, obviously, if an athlete from the institute wins a medal, they get to use that athlete at a very nominal cost for advertising and for their events and everything.